Welcome back. Welcome back uh, to 10 days ago, I guess, when I played Mancha's Madness and then um, <laughs> played other things. We're going to try really hard not to have to resort to pulling up Tabletop Simulator, okay? Because that was too much resources on my computer. Now, I kind of briefly remember what we had and what we were leading off of. I have the physical game in front of me. We're just gonna continue. We'll try to compete. We'll try to beat this campaign, okay? We're gonna continue where our last save left off. Now I've got the player cards in front of me. I've got the dice. I've got the items that they had equipped. I kind of don't remember who had what clues or who I talked to. Um, but we'll just have we'll just have to go from there, okay? Now let's see. This is the board. We can actually read the message log to see what we did. So, let's say, for the sake of it here, let's see, let's see, let's see, where's my characters? Where's my, where's my people? I've got Tommy Muldoon, Jenny Barnes, Diana Stanley, Carolyn Fern, okay? Um, nobody's lost any health or any sanity yet, so I don't have any horrors. Um, and then I've got some items, but who did I talk to last? Message log. Talked to Bruce. Okay. We talked to... Yeah, Bruce Darcy. Talked to Jean. That's this lady right here. We spoke to... I think we spoke to everybody but the butler in three turns, right? Yeah, we talked to May. We talked to Thomas Carvey and asked him about the uh, the weird writing in the journal. Okay. So I'm going to say we had somebody here, somebody here, somebody here, and somebody here. I guess it doesn't matter who's who. So for the sake of it... <laughs> um, Okay. Hmm. This is my turn. What, what would I like to do? Has everyone been talked to thoroughly? Yeah, Jean pulls a book down from the shelf, examines it, then replaces it. Alright. Thomas Carvey. Okay, I can ask him for more about the suspects. May sips from her drink, so we've exhausted all dialogue options for May. We've got Bruce Darcy here. We can still do more with, with Bruce. We can we can we can press him for more. I believe Carolyn Fern was here. Let's say Carolyn Fern here, Diana Stanley here, Jenny Barnes here, and Tommy Muldoon here, okay? So, this one we couldn't interact with because we won't be able to do it without someone noticing us. The amulet is hefty, it would be hard to conceal, it would be a mistake to take it now. We just have to remember this is here, okay? So let's take Tommy Muldoon, move him one space, two space, and just turn here. Sorry, like one, two, that's one turn, and then end his turn. Actually, maybe we should make him go in here. What am I talking about? One, two, and then his last turn to talk to the chef. The cook busies herself with something on the stove. We can ask for any good gossip or what happened in the foyer. Well, we don't want to. We don't want to raise any alerts. I, I feel like gossip is a little harmless sometimes. To, to go straight for the throat and ask, "Hey, what what happened to that huge mess in the foyer?" Uh, I think that's that's a little too direct for somebody who doesn't know us as strangers. So, we're just gonna ask for the good gossip. Hey, hey, good fella, any good gossip, eh? And then they'll say, "No such thing as good gossip." The cook winks, but I suppose I can share a little something. Did you know our Mr. Carby? has a particular love of gardening. Spent a lot of time in that conservatory of his. I would not have imagined it myself just looking at him. Gain a clue. Okay, so let me just write this down. We're gonna put one more clue on uh, Tommy Muldoon. So that gives him a total of two. Okay. <laughs> Continue. That ends his turn because I moved and then I spoke. Okay. She's already been talked to. I can't get anything from here yet. Carvey has shown a recent interest in gardening. Perhaps by looking around, you will discover the root of his interest. Unfortunately, looking around might, have, might have not fall under his domain, but discreet, so I can't grab anything from there. Okay. Um.
I don't think we can do anything with this kid, right? A large dog on the other side of the window growls at anyone who approaches the store. Okay, can't do anything there. Can I get anything over here? Yes. I think I said Carolyn Fern was here, right? So she moves one, interacts with this, Carolyn Fern, and a certain amount of picture frames has been arranged on the side table. We're gonna go ahead and search. In one picture, a man who looks like he might be Bruce's father introduces an angry looking Bruce to Carvey. In another picture, Jean holds up a certificate of authenticity while Thomas Carvey waves a strange book at the camera. One of the pictures is of Leland and Carvey sitting together at some sort of black tie event, both smiling politely towards the photographer. The last picture is of Carvey and May. He whispers something in her ear while she holds a hand over her mouth, stifling a laugh. These photos could be used to connect Carvey to each of his potential suspects. As you look at them, you notice a string of strange letters written in chalk. Perhaps Carvey will know more about these markings. Discard the search token and gain the photographic evidence unique item and two clues. Okay, so Carolyn Fern now has four clues to her name and the photographic evidence unique item. And then we can end the turn by moving up one, so I'll move her right here, okay? So let me just put Carolyn here next to the door, okay. Ask about the strange chalk marks on the pictures. Let's do just that. We heard, we, 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 uh... We communicated somehow telepathically. <laughs> Carvey looks around, then runs a hand through his hair. Look, this sounds absurd, but last week I woke up fully dressed, my hands covered in chalk. I... I do not know what those markings mean, but I truly do not believe I am the one who made them. So, you, your body has been possessed is what you're telling me? Do you think they mean something? Carvey buttons and unbuttons one of his cufflinks. Yes, I think they mean you had best get to the bottom of this before anything else odd happens to me. Way to be ungrateful, buddy boy. <laughs> Continue. Hmm. Move up here, end the turn. Who is that? Diana? So Diana. And then Jenny's the last person. And your turn here also. Okay. Confirm. Whispering voices drift down the halls. Their chanting becomes louder and louder. Carolyn Fern covers her ears and starts banging her head against the wall to get the voices out. She suffers one face down damage and one horror, but her will negates. Now Carolyn has five will. I'm gonna go ahead and fold five, five dice. I don't know if you guys can hear the dice, but we're rolling. I rolled four. I can't believe I rolled four successes. So we're good. Nothing happens to us. We are safe. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Carolyn moves up here and interacts with this. Okay, so let me move her. You look over the parchment with interest and know it would be useful to your investigation. However, simply taking it might raise Carvey's ire. Okay, so that didn't do anything. I'll just move her here for now. Well, actually, this doesn't count as a thing because I can't do it. Let's put her back here, okay? Put Carrie on the back. Let's, let's let the other two go up first, okay? Jenny goes this way. Carvey mentioned this was the door to the library and that Leland Williams, one of the guests, was in here. Okay. The library is well kept, the shelves are neatly organized, and the room smells faintly of polished wood. Got it. A stately man jots down notes in a small notepad. Place a person token as indicated. This is Leland Williams, one of your suspects. Continue. An ancient tome lies in a glass case. Place a search token as indicated. Pretty sure we can't grab that without Leland noticing. A familiar cover on one of the books catches your eye. Okay. Move one space in. Don't think I won't. Alright. 
So Jenny's now in here. We can use her last turn to talk to Leland, which I think we should. We need to get some clues and find out who's doing what. Leland Williams jots notes in a small notebook. Let's greet him. How do you do, sir? Leland tucks his notebook into his pocket, then shakes your hand. Pleasure to meet you. Hmm. If Leland is a stately man, he probably prides himself on his connections. So let's ask him how he knows Carvey, right? Thomas Carvey. Met him at a charity gala. It was nice to have a friendly face at those things. We have a lot of similar interests, so we hit things off rather well. How do you know Thomas? Let's just lie and say we met him at a club. Oh? Which club? I might be a member as well, and I would love to make a new connection. Ha ha ha! Okay, now, Jenny has to roll for her observation. She only has three, so I'm gonna roll three dice. Rolling, rolling, do do do. Oh man, only one success. Crap. Um, you're, you panic and mention a local club off the top of your head. Leland raises his eyebrows and shows you his cufflinks. Well, how about that? I'm a proud member myself, though I was sure I'd met everyone. We'll have to spend some time together soon. Oh, okay, I don't know. <laughs> um, we'll just change the subject. Do you enjoy the party? Yes, I always do here. Thomas has a wonderful home, and there's always something interesting to see. Between you and me, I think he likes to show off the rarer artifacts of his collection, like this book here, or the sword Carvey has mounted on the wall on his lounge. So the... that's this. This is the sword right here. I remember that. So Jenny Barnes has plus one clue. Oops. So that's... it gives her two clues. Okay. Man, she kind of dropped the ball there, didn't she? Um, let's make... let's make Diana go up. Oh, never mind. She cannot go up. Let's make Diana go two spaces and grab that. So one, two, that's one turn. Her second action. One of the books looks familiar to you, search it. You pull the book from the shelf and flip through the pages, lingering on familiar pictures. You find the chapter that contains useful information. She now has Arcane Insight spell. So now she has Wither, a 41 Derringer, Derringer and the Arcane Insight spell. Roger Dodger. Continue. Uh, <clears throat> Tommy, my good boy, would you mind uh, any more any more meat to take? We can ask about the foyer. I. Mm. Someone got upset and knocked something over. We can still see the mess here. The butler's been cleaning it. Do I want to know about that or do I want to get what's here? I think I want to get some items. Erno, is that too greedy? The debate, the debate, the debate, the debate, 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 debate. Um. I said we get it. We're moving Tommy over. There might be something useful among the clutter. We're gonna search. Forgotten behind a barrel of apples is an item that might help with your investigation. We get the magnifying glass. So Tommy Muldoon has Becky, which is his gun, the convincing dummy which adds restraint to the area, it keeps something from moving, and the magnifying glass. Magnifying glass, eh? What does that do? Let's, let's find out. Magnifying glass common item. Once per turn, immediately after you spend an action to explore a room, I could take one additional action. Ooh. Okay. Let me think here. Once per turn, right after I spend an action to explore a room, I can take one additional action. So that doesn't count right now. Continue. We'll move him back here. And that's, that's his turn. Carolyn Fern, you're all that's left. We left you out here. We're gonna move you... Can you be talked to? Did we talk to the butler? We can ask about the suspects. 
Okay, let's just talk to the butler directly. So she goes one, two, and then she talks to the butler. The butler has begun to tidy the foyer by writing over the overturned furniture. What happened here, and what is through that far door? I kind of want to know what's through the far door. Because I don't think the butler is going to tell us what happened here right in front of Mr. Carvey, if that makes sense. Hey, what's through that far door? Mr. Carvey's office. It is kept locked during dinner parties, as it contains documents related to his work. You are invited to enjoy the lounge or library while you await dinner, of course. Gain one clue. Carolyn Fern, plus one clue. You are now at five clues. Incredible. Continue. And everybody's gone twice. And the investigator phase. Thomas Carvey said dinner would start promptly at 7. You're running out of time to question the other guests. Tommy Muldoon squints against even the weakest light, and the pain in his head throbs in time with his heartbeat. So Tommy's got to roll his strength and get at least a 1. He's got 4 strength, so I'm going to roll 4 dice, and I just need to get a 1. Okay, I got 2. If he passes, the headache is just a distraction to work through. So nothing happens to me. Continue. Alright. Tommy, my boy, go ahead and finish talking to Le Chef. What happened to the foyer? To the foyer. <laughs> a modern day warrior, Tom Foyer. She lets out a loud laugh. <laughs> the foyer? Dear, I've been in this kitchen since 8 this morning preparing the roast for tonight. The cook lowers her voice and smiles. It is a particular favorite of Leland Williams. I think Mr. Carvey is trying to make up after some disagreement. Would not be the first time, let me tell you, gain a clue. Tommy, you've got another clue, my good friend. That puts you at three clues. Continue. Interesting. Let's move Tommy out here with May. Okay. <laughs> Let's make Carolyn talk to the butler again and ask what happened here. The butler's dull monotone is a stark contrast to the tight frown of his face. A gardener in Mr. Carvey's employ took exception to a comment made by Mr. Carvey earlier today. He has since been released from employment. I would not normally speak of such unpleasant business, but I was instructed to answer any questions you might have. Please, do not spread this around. Gain one clue. Carolyn Fern, I think you have the most clues. Yep, you do. Continue. Okay. Let's uh, move her over here. Okay. So we've got Tommy down here. Carolyn in here. We've got both um, Diana Stanley and Jenny Barnes on the top right. Can we talk to any more to Mr. Leland? All right, let's, let's talk with Jenny Barnes. We can ask him about business or how he knows the other guests. I want to know his connections to everybody else. Or, no, I want to know about his business. He looks like a man. I know I said he was a man who prides himself on his connections, so maybe we should. Yeah, I think we only get one shot. Let's ask him how he's acquainted with the other guests. Hmm? The others. Yeah, I suppose I could help you out there. Bruce seems nice enough, but his father's a nasty piece of work. How far do you think apples fall from trees? Ah, uh, yes, May. She is certainly... Well, she is... How do I say this? You know, I could not possibly speak ill of a, of a woman. So it sounds like he doesn't like May, and so he doesn't want to comment on it, okay? Uh, Gina's quiet, but I do not think I have ever seen a harder worker. I have tried poaching her from Thomas on a number of occasions, but no luck so far. Okay, for some reason he wants, uh, Jean to work for him instead, because she's a hard worker. Well, now, I might, I imagine that is enough to get you familiar with everyone. Get a clue? Get a clue could be uh, considered rude when, when said out of context, but I, I get it's literal. We're going to hit continue. All right. Uh, Diana, we'll move you back here for what's one turn. And we'll leave you here so you can grab that. So, okay. I think that's everybody. We left Carolyn here. We've got Tommy standing by here. Okay. Dinner time. Here we go. 
any moment now, the dinner bell will summon you to dinner. You cannot pinpoint where it crept on you, but now a heavy apathy consumes your thoughts. This mythos event affects the investigator who suffered the most horror. Literally nobody has, has been suffering horror. Why fight these overwhelming forces? Nothing you do will ever make a difference. Suffer two horror unless you discard one improvement. Ah, oh, crap. Um, does anybody have an improvement? What is an improvement? Oh, it's an improvement token. I don't have any improvement tokens. Um, so somebody's gonna have to suffer two horror, and it's gonna be face up. Right now, Carolyn Fern has the most sanity. So let's see. We're gonna just suffer two horrors, okay? So Carolyn Fern, let's see, she's got Binary Shock. Ah, your heart races and your breath catches in your throat. Resolve immediately, no additional effect. Flip the card face down. So Jenny Barnes has two horror. Second one. Um, panic. You scream, leaping desperately away and tumble to the ground. Resolve immediately, suffer one additional face down damage. Then face flip face down. Okay, dang it. Face down. One damage okay let's find out what happens with the damage because this can be face up as well minor injury resolve immediately no additional effect flip this card face down Sorry, gotta log these and panic. Okay. Continue. So I'm guessing we have one more turn before it's dinner time. How do I want to use this turn? I've kind of put everyone where I need them to be. Let's move Tommy here to talk to Mr. Carvey one last time. Tell me about the suspects. You would find out more about them if you mingled a little, but very well. They are all dear friends of mine, as you know. Carvey leans in to talk more softly. Bruce Darcy has bad nerves. I would suggest being careful not to spook him. His father and I had a bit of a falling out recently. Business ethics, you see. I did not remove my competition from this earthly's plane. Okay. Jane Spencer is not one for social pleasantries, but she is the sharpest mind for hire as a personal assistant. As an acquisitions lawyer, having her at my side to track down proper certifications has been key. Unfortunately, I may have promised her something that was not mine to promise. I thought for sure I would work it out, but Jane carries a rather impressive grudge. Leland Williams is a professional rival. He is a pillar of the community, at least according to him. It might be true, but the things I have seen that pillar do, well, I wonder what kind of community he belongs to. May Wynn was not always the spitfire socialite she is now. I had to get her out of a scrape a few years ago. I cannot go into details, I'm afraid. There, that ought to be enough to give you a sense of the other guests. Now play nice. But not too nice, because after all, someone's trying to murder him, plus two more clues for our good friend Tommy. We are racking up on clues here. Tommy, we'll leave you here. Well, no, we got to put you back here to grab the, whatever the heck that is. Um, I think we're done. We have enough characters to say that we can leave Carolyn here, Tommy over here. I've got... Uh, Diana waiting on standby here, and Jenny waiting on standby here. We're not going to go for the sword. Okay. And everyone's been talked to just right. Oh my god, I can still talk to Bruce. Crap. Uh, Diana, you're going to move away from this one too. Move you here. Talk to good old Bruce. Good old Brucey boy. Hmm. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's find out more about the guests from Bruce. 
I do not speak to them much, but I suppose I could tell you a little about them. Truth be told, I do not think Miss Spencer likes me very much. My father respects the work of Mr. Williams very much. I must confess to finding him a little intimidating. May is very social, and I fear I do not meet her expectations when we talk. I am not sure if that was what you needed, but I hope it helped. Gain one clue. Hi, Jushi. It was me with the lamp in the kitchen. The clue ha the Listen, I don't have it in me to murder. If anything, if, if it was in the kitchen with the lamp, what ended up happening, what happened was I was making a nice uh, rigatoni, and then the uh, I slipped on the lamp, and then the, the lamp broke, and I didn't clean up all the glass, and then somebody slipped on the same rigatoni, and then they got their throat slit by the, the shards, and then I tried to cover up the murder by pouring more rigatoni sauce all over their face, and it make it look like it was just sauce and not blood everywhere. Hi! Um, gain a clue? <laughs> um, let's see. That was our that was our good friend Diana Stanley gaining a clue. So now she's got plus three clues. Amazing. And we want to put her somewhere. No, we can't. We ended her turn here, so she's stuck here. We've got Jenny up here. I want to get this. An ancient tome is housed in a locked glass case. Your fellow guests would likely find it extremely odd if I acquired the book now. Da, 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 da. Just gonna go ahead and steal this book. You're right. It would be kind of sus. I think. I think that's everybody. Can't talk to you anymore, right? Yep. Dinner preparations have consumed the cook's attention. Uh, can't talk to you anymore. May sips from her drink. Can't talk to you anymore. I think you ought to meet some of the other guests. Do not be shy. They're not going to hurt you. Let's see. I do not think I know of anything that will help you. She's just looking at books right now. She pulls a book down from the shelf and keeps replacing it. Okay. All right. We're moving on. I'm a little bit spooked. Here comes the dinner bell. Let's go ahead and ring our dinner bell. There goes our dinner bell. There's their dinner bell. The ringing of a bell calls everyone to this evening's meal. You and the other guests are moving towards the dining room when the lights suddenly go out and the mansion is plunged into darkness. Place darkness in each location. Okay. So what, what it is is darkness means that I cannot use my clues to convert the, uh, the maybe magnifying glasses into successes. So everyone's going to suffer one face down horror, but their wills negate. Let's go ahead and start that now. We're going to start with Diana, who's got the weakest will. She only has two will, but didn't I give her something? No, I didn't. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, she rolled two successes. Thank goodness for that. Um, Carolyn Fern has five will, so we're going to roll five dice for Carolyn. Let's see. I got to get at least one. She gets just one and three of the magnifying glasses. Oh my god, that was close. Tommy Muldoon's got three will. We're going to go ahead and roll three dice. You can hear the dice rolling maybe. I don't know. Here we go. He's got two. I got two successes, and Jenny Barnes also has three. We're going to roll three dice. Please do not suffer any horror. I can't take any... The horror! The horror! Okay, she rolled two magnifying glasses, so she's going to suffer some horror. Uh, let's go ahead and draw a horror card. Let's see. Okay. Flashback. Recent memories claw their way to the surface despite your best efforts. Resolving mainly flip one other horror face up and discard this card. Okay, well, we're gonna flip up her minor shock, <laughs> which gives uh, resolve immediately no additional effect. So she still only has two horror because we got to discard that one. So she just had a flashback of her minor shock. She's totally fine. She's totally coping with it just fine. She's like, hey, remember that time I was minorly shocked? Yeah, that was that was pretty spooks. And then that's it. Yeah, an investor cannot, in darkness cannot spend clues to convert dice. Yeah, 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 we knew this. That will be the fuse box. I have been having issues all week. Carvey's voice booms from somewhere in the dark. Just a moment, I will get it back to working order. Everyone find a chair and sit tight. Though you hear a cacophony of footsteps, your eyes have trouble adjusting to the sudden dark. You lose track of all the others in the house. Remove all people token. Remove all the people token! 
A few long moments pass in the dark before muffled thumps and bangs come from beneath the floors. Things go briefly quiet, then a horrific scream pierces the night. Oh! With growing concern, you recognize the panicked voice of Thomas Carvey. Each investigator suffers to horror. The will negates. Okay, let's do that right now. We're going to start off with Diana again, who only has two will. Da -da -da. She rolled one, so she gets one horror. <sighs> Alright, let's see. What do you get, Diana? Uh, hysteria. You scream and scream and scream. You slap yourself as hard as you can, hoping to break the cycle. Resolve immediately. Flip one damage face up, then flip this card face down. She has no damage, so she just has one... Oops. One face... Okay, let's see. One face down. Horror. Hysteria. Okay. Okay. Who's next? Who's next? Who's next on the list of who's getting spooked tonight? Uh, Carolyn Fern. Also, I just realized I gave Carolyn Fern the fine clothes, which gives her plus one to any influence check, which we haven't had to use. I just wanted to throw that out there, so she's going to have one additional dice roll. So, let's see. Carolyn Fern with your five will. Let's see how you well you do. You just need to get a two to negate all damage done to yourself. And you rolled... No! She rolled one! And then she rolled one, two magnifying glasses. So what does she get? Sudden shock. <laughs> uh, gasping in surprise and fear, you clutch at your face, forgetting for a moment what you had been holding on seconds before. Resolve immediately drop two random items. Oh no! Carolyn! The good thing is I can pick up dropped items, but it just takes a turn to do so. So she loses her fine clothes. And she loses her photographic evidence unique item. Darn it. And then she's got one face down whore now. One face down horror, sudden shock. Okay. Who's next? Who's next? Yeah, oh no, is right. Oh no! Uh, Tommy Muldoon with his three will. We heard our host dying, I'm assuming, and now we've all lost our brains. Tommy Muldoon is safe. Jenny Bonds also has three will. Jenny Bonds is safe as well. Perfectly two. Get it together, lady. Look, the horror, the horror. What are you supposed to do about that, Jushi? Somewhere deeper in the mansion, something has happened to your host. Find the source of the scream and restore the lights of the house to discover the cause of Carvey's panic. It's my ten. It's dark. Okay, we had Carolyn here for a reason. Let's do this now. Carvey has shown a recent interest in gardening. Perhaps by looking around, you'll discover the root of his interest. We're going to go ahead and search this. Ah! A trap door. You find a segment of the wood floor that sounds more hollow than the rest. As you poke and prod around it, one of the knots in the wood depresses and reveals a trap door. We got a secret passage, you guys. As you enter the tunnel, you swear you hear footsteps echoing through it, but in the dark you cannot tell if they are coming or going. Among the noises, you hear something clatter to the floor, and you press your back against the wall until the footsteps fade. So somebody's passing us. Somebody's in here with us. Okay? As you creep along the passage, you stumble over something on the ground. You get the cultist's journal unique item. Okay, Carolyn. You dropped your items, but you still have the cultist's journal unique item. Okay, I don't think I want to waste a turn by picking up my stuff right now. So we're just going to hit continue. Oh my, the passage is cold and dank and slopes downwards into the earth. We have the basement area. Okay. You emerge in the cool, dark basement. This is the entrance. Oh no, the fuse box Carvey sought is against the far wall. Place the search token here. I can turn on the fuse. A ghastly figure is slumped in the corner. Place a search token as indicated. Okay. Thomas Carvey lies on the floor, dead. His sightless eyes stare toward the ceiling, and his body is surrounded by candle stubs. He appears burnt or shriveled, though you do not smell the stench of burning flesh. Somebody used a spell? And turn this guy into beef jerky? A door at the far end of the basement leads back towards the rest of the house. This is his office. 
Move one space to the explored area. Okay, so now our good lady, Carolyn Fern, is right here. So we have one more action left before her turn ends, okay? We can read the cultist journal. We can attempt to turn on the fuse box. We can look at this dead body over here. For some reason, there's another dead body here. Thomas Carvey's dead body's here. Somebody brushed past us along the stairwell. They were probably the murderer. But they dropped a book. That's their book. So it sounds to me like the, the book is the way to identify who the murderer is, right? That's this. Okay, let me think. Jushi, do you think it's more important to turn the lights back on now to find out where everybody is? Or is it more important to read this journal and maybe the killer has <laughs> given themselves away in their own journal? The lights? Okay. We're gonna go for the lights. The fuse box Carvey sought hangs open on the wall. We're gonna go ahead and search it. Someone has muddled with these wires. You must reconnect them properly to restore the power of the house. We can resolve these using our observations. So Carol and Fern has four observations, which means we get four. We can do four things per one turn, okay? Holy crap. <laughs> um Okay, so obviously this one goes this one goes here. So that's one turn. Okay. Two turns. Oh crap. <laughs> um three turns. Four turns? Oh no. Damn it. <laughs> oh no. I done goofed. Well, that's it. <laughs> that's the end of her turn. Okay. Now, who do we have? Oh, yeah, we had Jenny Barnes ready to grab this. An ancient tome is housed in a locked glass case. Two shadowy figures approach the case. Clearly, some of the other guests had the same idea as you. In the dark, you are unable to make out either of the figure's features, and when you step closer, both shadows flee. Two people were going after this book! You think you could pick the lock on the case with a little effort. Solve using your observation. This lady only has three observation. Okay, it's going to take me more than three turns to do this. One, two, three. So that's one turn. She gets two actions per turn. One, two, three. So that's her whole her whole turn was right there. Puzzle completed. The glass case opens with a small click. Gain the Tome of Secrets common item. Tome of Secrets? Tome of Secrets, eh? This is Jenny Barnes' first item, believe it or not. Tome of Secrets. She's got the Tome of Secrets. Tome of Secrets. What is that? What is you? Tome of Secrets. You may become mesmerized to convert all of my clues to successes. Ah. Very interesting. I see, I see. I see, I see, I see, I see. So. I can do this in the dark, too, which is great. Okay. So that's it for you, Jenny. Jenny, old buddy, old pal. Um, Diana. You were gonna look through here. A thin parchment covered in strange symbols has been framed and hung on the wall. We're gonna search it. A figure in the dark squeaks nervously, yeep, <laughs> and quickly disappears back into the shadows. You slip the frame from the wall and easily remove the parchment inside. Get the arcane manuscript. The arcane manuscript for our good friend Diana Stanley she right now has the most items I believe arcane manuscript what are you what is it the arcane manuscript roll one additional dice while resolving any lore skill check I like it I like it a lot okay this, this is very, very good for us. She has one more turn. We're going to open the office door. The door leads to the rest of the mansion. Oh! You try the handle and find it locked. Is, is someone there? Mr. Carvey? The polite voice of the butler pipes out of the darkness nearby. 
Ah, Mr. Carvey's special guest. I was quite concerned. It should not have taken this long to get the lights back on. You can reach the basement and Mr. Carvey through his office. Please find my employer. Here, I'll unlock the door for you. The butler fumbles for a moment with the key that opens the door and gestures inside. Carvey's office is full, is full of scattered books and papers. Gotcha, gotcha. A locked case has been placed on the shelf. Some papers and books lie in Carvey's desk. Okay, so now Diana is in there, okay? And the only. That ends her turn. We got uh, Tommy Muldoon, who's right here. A strange amulet has been left on the sign table. We're gonna grab it. The amulet is smooth in your hand. You pocket it in the dark, confident it will be helpful in your investigation. I get the Elder Ward. Good old Tommy Muldoon, once again. Dummy Muldoon, who's got her Becky, which is machine gun, his convincing dummy, his magnifying glass, and his now Elder Ward. Common item. What the heck is Elder Ward do? Let's find out. Elder Ward. The Elder Ward. Roll one additional dice if a monster is attacking you. Oh, baby. Hand it on over. You know what I like? Okay, we're going to move him one, two, right here. He's in the hallway next to the red chair. That's everybody's turn. I have failed to turn the power back on. Some items are probably going to go missing now. The shadows in the corners of every room seem to creep inward. This mythos effect event affects the investigator in a space containing darkness with the lowest amount of observation. So everyone's in darkness. The lowest observation is everyone exactly has... No, it's Jenny. She only has three. So this is going to be Jenny. The darkness ahead of you becomes alive. The living black smoke coagulates into human form. Oh, no! Jenny's going to roll her will, which she has three of. So let's do this. Rolling, rolling, rolling. She rolls two. She's perfect. If you pass, you realize it's just a trick of the light. She's fine. We did it. We did it. Okay. So, nobody's taken anything yet. We still have time to grab stuff. We still have time to grab stuff. That's a sword. <laughs> That's Tom Carvey's body. Let's let's do Diana first. I want her to grab this stuff, but first let's get Tommy caught up, okay? So Tommy's here. One, two. Well, Mike, Tommy grab this thingy, and then Diana can get that one, okay? So Tommy's now with Diana. Papers and books cover Carvey's desk. Among the clutter, you find something that looks like Carvey's personal journal. Gain the old journal unique item. So Tommy... Tommy Muldoon, who's busy collecting items, now has the old journal, okay? That ends his turn. We're going to put Diana up here and investigate this. A locked case has been placed on the shelf. You think you could pick the lock. Another lock to pick! Okay. So, wait, hold on. Skill is the eyeball. She has four. Two, three. Four. One, two, three, four. Darn it. <sighs> Normally you can you can spend some stuff to get it, but it's dark. Okay, who is this? this is Diana, right? She has... Do I have anything that can help me while doing a... Nope. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have anything. We're gonna have to stop it here. We'll have to get it next turn. Darn it. I'm, I'm one move away! That's so unfair. Okay. Um, We need to get the lights back on. Attempt. Okay. So this is with the vision, right? The observation. I can do four per turn. Like this. Then like this. Oh! I was so close. The power is back on. Puzzle completed. Cool. You flip the master lever, and the lights in the house flicker back on. So all the darkness is gone. Someone must have shut off the power to the house. Gave the circumstantial evidence. Okay. So... That gives Carolyn circumstantial evidence. 
Circumstantial evidence. And another clue. Okay. Continue. Okay, so we've got the lights back on. The butler mops his brow with a damp handkerchief. Cook wrings her hands near a half-finished dessert. She was still cooking in the dark? What's dedication? Bruce paces the dining room. Bruce is here. Jean pages, pages quickly through a book. So she stole a book. Leland puffs a cigar, a slight tremor in his hand. He knows something. May cries quietly in the library. With the lights restored, you can question the other guests on the murder of Thomas Carvey. Mm. Now we know who was trying to get what kind of, don't we? He was going for the sword. Okay. I was gonna say, I could pick this lock now because I could have spent a clue now that it's not dark. But, who hasn't gone? Jenny? No, Jenny used up all of her things. Carolyn still has a turn. We can investigate his dead body, but I kind of want to read this journal. I read it. This is the last turn for uh, Carolyn. This book is written in a strange cipher. Oh no, I gotta solve it using lore. But Carolyn only has three lore. Oh no, it's one of these. Oh, I'm so bad at these. Okay. So it's like, um... What's that game called? You basically have to guess the password, right? And it'll tell you what's right and what's wrong. It'll tell you if something's in the right position or not, but it won't tell you which position is correct. Let's just get this out of the way. We know it's five digits. Let's do all greens. Are there any greens at all in this? There's oh, one green. <laughs> How many reds are there? No reds at all. We're just... <laughs> There's two yellows, one green. That's it. Oh, I can spend clues! How many clues do I have for her? Listen, this lady's got seven clues. We're gonna solve this, okay? I'll just keep deducting for my clues. Okay. How many blues are there? One blue, okay? That leaves her with six clues left. <laughs> um, let's do yellow, yellow, green, blue, gray, yes. Oh, two, two of them are in the correct position, two of them are in the wrong position. Is it, we know there's no reds, right? So is it, are these two in the right position? Nope, one of these is in the right position. That's another clue gone. Okay. So I think it's green in the middle is correct, right? Yep, so green is in the middle, we know that for sure. Yellow is here. Blue here, gray here, purple here. Oh no! Down another clue. Only one of these was correct. That means yellow has to be here and green has to be here. Okay. Gray, blue, gray. Oh! Down another clue. We got three left. Oh no. Okay. Blue. Gray, gray. Ah! No. We've got two clues left. Three of these in the right position. Pretty sure it's these are in the right position, right? Yes, one clue left. So there's no grays. Two yellows, one green, one blue. Ah, 
how many purples are there? One purple. Well, there goes all my clues. <laughs> we'll get it next turn, we will. Alright, so we know it's a purple somewhere and a gray somewhere, right? That, that ends that ends a lot of that ends everyone's turns I think right is that at everyone's turn no I just turned the lights on didn't I no I lo I unlocked it yeah I think everyone's gone darn 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 we'll get it next turn <laughs> you don't know what's going on, but I'm doing great. From far away, you hear the muffled echoes of Carvey's screams as if transmitted through the radio. Each investigator suffers two horror. Their will negates. Okay, we start with Diana's will. She's got two. She suffers no horrors. We do Tommy Muldoon, who's got three. We're rolling three dice. I got two, exactly. Okay, who's next? Carol and Fern, you have five will. But you've been a failure to me. Come on. I just need two, baby. She rolls three. I'm getting lucky. Rolling three dice for Jenny Barnes, and then we're good. Hiya! Okay, she rolled all blanks. I get uh, two horror. That sucks. That sucks so bad. <laughs> Let's see. What do we get? Uh, okay. Minor shock, no additional effect. Flip this card face down. Claustrophobia. It is too close in here, too tight. You cannot breathe. You must get to open air. Keep face up. Whenever you end your turn within range of two or fewer spaces, suffer one face down horror. What? What? So she's got two minor shocks. A panic and a claustrophobia. Okay, if you say so, lady. A throbbing whine rises slowly, making your ears ache and your teeth buzz. Clutching your ears makes the sound almost bearable, so for two face down horror, your will minus one negate, so that sucks. Diana is fine, she had one. Um. Tommy Muldoon only gets to roll two dice. He's fine. Uh, Carol and Fern rolls four. She's fine. Now here's here's the kicker. Jenny Barnes, who sucks apparently. Let's roll dice and see what she gets. She's actually fine. But she does lose a clue. <laughs> She's got now two clues. Had to convert something there. We're good. Okay. Let's read this dang journal. <laughs> first things first, we're gonna solve this dang journal. So let me explain what's going on here, Jushi. Uh, how much turn does she get? Carolyn has four observation. How many grays have we got? There's gotta be at least one gray. There's no grays! What? How is that possible? There's one green, two yellows, one blue. One, two, three, four. Oh, that's why. <laughs> so we know the sequence is yellow, blue, green. There's a purple. And then there's another yellow. Ah! Oh my god, we're in! Finally. It only took us forever. Now decoded, you page through the entries and find the book to mostly be rituals and formulae centered around being by a being by the name of Yogg Sothoth. Someone has gone through great trouble to gather as much information as possible. Only the final entry in the journal holds some clue to your specific mystery, however. 
The others do not yet understand. We do small rites and rituals, gaining knowledge that leads to nothing more than financial success. There has to be a greater plan for this knowledge, and I seek to serve it. There is so much in this universe I could see, so much I could know. A price must be paid, of course, but it cannot be that different from any other poor wretches we have dragged in here for the group. It will be Carvey. I think he is the only other one who really understands what is at stake here and I do not want him getting any ideas about me. It will be a convenient bonus that it will also please my father. It's Bruce Darcy! Bruce Darby's doing everything for his daddy. It's Bruce. We know who it is. Okay, so who's closest to Bruce right now? Who's closest to Bruce? We've got Tommy here, Diana here, Jenny's here, Jenny is closest to Bruce. We accuse, we accuse him. One, two, three, four. Jenny is right here. She's almost ready to confront Bruce, but she's going to suffer from claustrophobia. Okay, you know what? Let's just keep her one, two, three. We'll keep her out here. That way, this is a big space. No claustrophobia. Then, we take Diana. One, two, three, four. Diana is where I wanted her to be. She's not able to be either. We're going to put uh, Tommy. One, two, three, four. Tommy is right here. Okay. Let's see. And then, oop. We were standing right here as Carolyn. Uh, I guess she can look at the body. What is this? A ghastly figure with misshapen arm is slumped in the corner. Ew. Kinda wanna look at his body. Thomas Carvey lies on the floor dead. His sightless eyes stare down the ceiling. Here, who's burnt? Okay, we saw that. Um, I'm gonna move her closer to his body and then we have to end our turn here we have it we just have to accuse this nerd before we die strange shadows move and coalesce in the room of the mansion forming the same shadow of a familiar man in each room with a start you realize the shadow bears a strong resemblance to thomas carvey everyone suffers to horror once again a will check or will negates we just gotta get two carolyn fern with five she is fine Jenny Barnes, the, the person who always fails her skill checks with three will, is surprisingly fine. Tommy Muldoon with also three will. Let's see. He rolls one, but he uh, gets two magnifying glasses. Let's see. We can convert. How many clues does Tommy have? Tommy has five. Well, he now has four because I'm going to have to spend a clue. And uh, Diana has two will. Oh, my God. She's got the worst. She's fine, actually. Perfect. With a start, Carolyn Fern snaps out of a fugue state to see smashed finery and deep gouges on the nearby walls. Could she have caused this damage in a blind rage? Carolyn Fern suffers three damage. Oh my god, her strength plus one negates. She's got three, so that means four. I have to roll three successes. We're rolling. She's got like no clues left. Okay. Oh my god. Dude, I'm rolling. I'm rolling with the best of them. She flips all of her damage face up. I believe she already has a damage, though. Let's see. No, she doesn't. She only has one one horror. She's fine. I got so lucky. Oh, we got we got to save the the horror, the horror. Okay, so who's the closest right now? Diana is the closest. Diana's gonna move one and accuse good old Bruce Darcy. Bruce paces, alternately straightening and loosening his tie. We're just gonna straight up accuse you of murder. As an action, you can accuse Bruce Darcy of murder. Are you sure you want to accuse Bruce Darcy of murder? Accuse him. The ghost of Thomas Carvey appears behind Bruce Darcy and passes one faint hand through the murderer's heart with a solemn nod. The ghost confirms your suspicions. Ooh! Bruce Darcy scowls and loses much of his nervous energy. It does not matter, he sneers. This is merely a setback. Discard Bruce from the board, then spawn a thrall as indicated. Oh my jeez. I was promised ultimate knowledge. You will not stand in my way now. The murderer produces a silver key and makes a strange gesture. A moment later, an otherworldly portal appears in the hall. The gate is open. As soon as I have cleaned up loose ends here, I can take what was promised to me. Spawn a thrall as indicated. We now have two sprawls. We have three sprawl of thralls. Another monstrous person steps from the rift. There is a shrieking cries for help from around the room. All the others, all the others, scramble to 
cover and protect themselves. Everyone has left us. We got two thralls here. We've got a big daddy thrall over here, which is Bruce Darcy. I'm pretty sure all we have to do is take out a good old man, old friend of mine, Bruce Darcy. Uh, Tommy Muldoon has a gun, which means he has range, which means he can shoot. So Tommy, who is here, can shoot. Let's go ahead and attack this nerd. This is Bruce Darcy. Dude's got 19 health, OMG! We're gonna attack him with the firearm, okay? We're gonna attack him with Becky. Oh, let's see. So Becky has four damage inherently, okay? You take aim at the figure's legs, hoping to slow it in advance. If you pass, one of your shots pierce the foot and another on the calf, the monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage. So he gets four damage if I get at least two agility. Tommy Muldoon has four agility, so we're gonna roll four dice. La 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 la. Ooh, exactly two, baby. So he gets four damage. Continue. We're gonna shoot him again. That was really good. Okay. Attack him with a firearm. You train your eyes and your target and squeeze off a shot. Okay, I have to roll two again. I mean, roll four dice and get a two. Hi, 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 La 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 la. Ooh. If you pass, the impact staggers your foe. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage. We're doing pretty good. We can't attack with Diana because we had to move and confront him, so that used up all of her turns. So Tommy has gone and shot him, and then Jenny Barnes is right there too. Hmm. What does Jenny have? She doesn't have anything to fight with but her bare hands. She's got the Tome of Secrets. <laughs> She's got the Tome of Secrets, that doesn't help! Wait, Diana has a gun too. I forgot I gave Diana the gun. Dang. A thrall. You have an orc. <laughs> um, Carolyn Fern, let's just go ahead and investigate the body. Yeah, let's keep you out of danger. Thomas Carvey lies on the floor dead. His sightless eyes stare towards the ceiling. Yeah, we've read this like seven times. What does it say? You investigate the body of Thomas Carvey and find a dagger. We get the Ritual Dagger. Carolyn Fern with the Ritual Dagger. That's her first weapon. <laughs> cool. That's it? Unsure what Ritual Carvey's death may have served, you quickly collect the strange objects that have been placed around his body. Gain the Ritual Components. Oh my god. She's All she has is evidence. Carolyn is the evidence gatherer. She's our uh, CSI. So we've got the Ritual Components, unique item, and two clues. So she goes from zero clues to two, very nice. Um, I guess we'll move her over here. Okay, that, uh, I don't wanna move Jenny. So Jenny's gonna have to stay right here. But the thralls are up here. We need to keep Jenny in an open space. We move Jenny here. <laughs> so she doesn't get claustrophobic, okay? Trust me on this one. I just don't want her to have to battle. Okay, confirm. Things move around Thomas Carvey's home of their own volition. Furniture is sliding several inches out of place as though someone were showing them a great... In a great fit of rage, each investigator suffers two horror. Their lore negates. Oh no? Okay, who's got the worst lore? Tommy Muldoon only has two lore. I need to get two. I got one success and two success. Tommy Muldoon, you're fine. Uh, next is Jenny Barnes, who only has three dice, three lore. So we're going to need to get two. Jenny, please, for the love of God. Okay, I'm going to have to spend one of Jenny's clues. I got one success, one magnifying glass. How many clues does Jenny have? She has two clues. Okay, so now she only has one clue. Oh, man. Okay, uh, who's next? Carolyn Fern has three lore. Carolyn lady. I think you're suffering the most right now. Okay, I have to use both of her clues that I just got because I rolled three magnifying glasses. So Carolyn for now has zero clues again. Um, Diana Stanley has five lore, so she should theoretically be okay unless I screw the, screw the pooch on this one. She's fine. Rolled exactly two with three blakes. Everyone's okay. Light fades from around you, leaving anything even inches from your face obscured. Place darkness in each space of the basement storage. Nobody's in there. This is fine. 
The Thrall moves up to two spaces to be within range of as many investigators as possible. Then it attacks the investigator the range who has suffered the least damage. So it straight up attacks Diana. The monster attacks. If you hear the rat, you hear the raspy voice of the Thrall calling you by name. Diana! That's how I imagine it sounds like. <laughs> um, we have to roll will two. Diana only has two will. Lady, for the love of God, don't get beat. She rolled two. Oh my god. It's a miracle. If you pass, you ignore its call. We're fine. We're fine. Okay, now it's the one over here. It moves two spaces towards the nearest investigator. Then it attacks the investigator with the lowest... Okay, so... Oh no, it still attacks Jenny! Dang it, because it goes one, two. The hulking monster sweeps at you with its malformed claw. So she has three strength. I just need to get two. Oh my god! Darn it, darn it, darn it. I have to use Jenny's last clue. So Jenny has zero clues now. But she doesn't take any damage. I'm just mad I have no more clues. If you pass, you dodge from a swing. <sighs> this is bad. This is bad, you guys. Um, the next guy who moves two spaces near the nearest investigator and has suffered the most damage, it's still going to be Jenny. It attacks Jenny again. See, now I have no more clues to save Jenny. The Thrall has skin that heaves and crawls with a power you don't understand, but the injuries you have suffered start to twitch and answer. Flip three, damage face up. Jenny, you don't have any damage. No, no, she has one face down damage. Damn it! Okay, let's see. It's just minor injury, so that one's fine. But my will negates it. She's got three will. I can negate this from even happening. She rolled three failures. Okay, so um, I flip up minor injury. It tells me to resolve immediately. Flip face down again. That's fine. Um, but I become mesmerized. What is mesmerized? Mesmerized. At the end of your turn, an alien will take control. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! An alien! I'm being alienated! Mesmerized. It's like that song, Mesmerized. I'm in danger. I'm in danger. I'm mean, right. You fool. How dare you become mesmerized? Continue. Each investigator must resolve a horror check against the monster within range. Okay, so both monsters are near Jenny. She can just do either, it's, it'll do one or the other. Okay, so. When the creature locks gaze with you, you hear a voice calling your name, suffer two face on horror, Jenny's will once again. She's only got three. She finally, she finally is okay. Nothing happens to us. We are already mesmerized anyway. Okay, now how many people have to face Bruce Darcy? Both Diana and Tommy have to do with deal with this skill check. The Thrall grins at an unheard com comment and turns its sightless gaze upon you. Roll for lore. So Tommy, you only have two lore. You need three, so you're not going to make it either way. Okay. If you fail, the Thrall's behavior sets you on edge, jumping at every little noise. Suffer two horror. Okay. Let's see. Two horrors for, for the good man, Tommy Maloon. What you got here, buddy boy? The horror, the horror. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Kleptomania. You do not understand why you need to keep stealing things, but you cannot help yourself. Keep face up. Whenever you end your turn in a space with another investigator, take one item at random from another investigator in your space. Oh no. Um, one horror face up, left doe. All right, what's the next one? Okay, did nothing happens. Face down. Okay, one face down horror. Oh my god. 
Uh, I ain't in trouble. Dude's a klepto. Oh, I'm rolling the dice in real life. Um, I have this board game, and I was playing it on Tabletop Simulator at first, but it was using up too much resources on my computer. So, um, I just went and got the pieces out. <laughs> okay, Diana has five lore. Let's see. I'm a klepto! Be gay, do klepto crimes, yas! Okay, Diana's fine. Alright. Ooh! Ooh! Let's kill him. <laughs> uh, attack. Goodbye, Bruce. Attack you. Both Diana and Tommy were gonna be are gonna be straight up blasting. They both got gats, okay? They both have guns, and you know what they're gonna say? They're gonna tell them straight up. They're gonna say, "Hey, anyway, Bruce, I started blasting." Bah, bah. Wow. That's exactly. That's exactly it. Okay, I need to know what the forty-one Derringer does. It does three damage. Ooh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, we'll attack with Diana first with a firearm. It is so much easier to shoot the enemy from a comfortable distance than to engage in unseemingly fisticuffs. Roll for agility. She's got four, so I'm gonna roll four dice. Hi -ya -ya -da 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 -da. Ooh! <laughs> If you pass, you brought a gun to a knife fight. The monster suffers damage equal to the weapon's damage. That's three. Dang it. I was hoping you... Sometimes it says, like, the weapon's damage plus your your success rate. How many dice you rolled. I rolled four out of four, baby. That would have done, like, seven damage if that was it. Let's shoot him again. Let's shoot him again. You aim at your foe's center of mass. Agility plus one. So that means she gets five dice now. Diana rolling five dice. Here we go. She rolled four out of five. The monster surface damage equal to your test result, so four. Okay. Now we had, hopefully, Tommy Muldoon can finish it off. Attack with a firearm. You drop to one knee, take aim, and fire. Okay, agility to, agility, I just need, he has four. I need two to win. Let's see. How many clues does he have? Does he have any clues? He has four clues. If you pass, your shot punches clear through the figure and impacts behind it. The monster service, the monster and the, another monster in its base each suffer damage equal to the weapon's damage. Okay, so I have to spend a clue, but that puts Tommy at three clues left. So he suffers four damage. We're done. We're done. Oh! An invisible force slams the murderer into the ground, and you hear the sound of Carby's bitter laughter. The investigation is complete. We have won. I didn't even get to steal anything as a The apparition of Thomas Carvey materializes at your side. Though still spectral, he more closely resembles the man he was when alive. He lashes out at the last of the killer's minions, aiding you greatly. With no remaining defenses, you subdue the murderer under the spirit's watchful eye. As you await the police, Carvey's spirit fades, a last smile on his ethereal face. The front door clicks open and the first rays of dawn spill over the threshold. In the distance, you hear police cars roar up the drive. Okay, we did it. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, this is like my favorite board game of all time, but I often lose. It is a hard game. And I think I only won because I played as four characters and um, that gave me more time to do stuff. But yeah, we did it. Ooh, ooh baby. Oh, man. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Uh, we did it. We actually won. We solved the murder. We didn't prevent it, but we solved it. <laughs> Dude still got killed. Dude still died. Oh, man. I feel a little bit sad about that. <laughs> that guy got killed. Oh, no. Well, that ends the series of Managers of Madness. What do I think if I... I think that uh, it's still my favorite board game. I think if I stream it again, I want to play it with some friends for sure. And I do want to do it on Tabletop Simulator. That way you guys can actually see the board and the dice and the cards. And you can read it and follow along. Um, I really just wanted to conclude this series. So we're going to go ahead and just raid somebody now that we've finished our, our stream. We're going to raid uh, Muga Mashuk. I think that's how you pronounce it. I just call him Moomoo. They're playing Hunt Showdown. Thanks for sticking around. 